crashed. 412 EDT, April 12, 2018, updated. 12 o'clock EDT, April 12, 2018 One of Scotland Yard stop officers today insisted they could not stop the shrine to a burglar killed by a pensioner because laying flowers is not a crime after floral tributes opposite the OAP's house were cleared away, but warned vigilantes intent on destroying it if it returns they could be arrested. Met Deputy Commissioner Sir Craig Mackey has been criticized for calling the death of career criminal Henry Vincent a tragedy for his family and telling those tearing the flowers down to act respectfully, but also admitted he wished the memorial wasn't there at all. He said, this is a tragedy for the family who have lost a loved one. It is also a tragedy for the homeowner forced to take the action he did out it would have been preferable if the pavement had remained clear and the local area had not become the focus of disruption which then needed police resources to manage. And in a warning to those who want to destroy the flowers, balloons and cards Sir Craig added, if you do things where you cause a breach of the peace, disorder in that area, then like anyone, you could end up getting arrested apostrophe. Comedian John Bishop has joined the huge numbers upset with the police response calling it a disgrace as a YouGov poll found 82% of Britons believe the shrine is inappropriate. More than 200 people have also joined Facebook group to support residents of street where the burglar was killed eight days ago. The shrine to Henry Vincent and Hither Green remains destroyed today, pictured, amid concerns his family could return to rebuild even new local vigilante. Ian Gordon, has torn down the floral shrine to the stabbed burglar Henry Vincent, the fourth time in three days, but police have warned there could be arrests if it happens again Sir Craig Mackey insisted the case was a tragedy for Richard Osborne Brooks and the family of Henry Vincent, and urged people not to tear the bouquets down a new tribute from his cousin was left at the scene but the majority of flowers and cards, including ones from his children, have been destroyed, right Vincent, who was armed with a screwdriver, was stabbed as he raided 78-year-old Richard Osborne Born Brooks is home while the pensioner and his wife, who has dementia, were asleep in the London property last Wednesday. Vigilantes have trashed the shrine to the career criminal outside four times and been the tributes, each time his family has returned to put it back up again. Nobody has been arrested over the turf war. Sir Craig has urged both sides to take a deep breath because police are there for crime not for flowers and added they wanted to concentrate on finding Vincent's accomplice Billy Jeeves, 28. The Met has been urged to bulldoze a shrine to Vincent outside the Hither Green House, which has been ripped down four times this week by irate locals who regard it as an insult and a veiled threat to Mr. Osborne Brooks. Police insist they cannot remove the flowers and cards from the Hither Green Street because laying them is not a crime, but members of the public have contacted the Met saying that it is a veiled threat to Richard Osborne Brooks, who stabbed to death Henry Vincent after he broke in. Critics have said that the memorial constitutes harassment of locals in Hither Green, but the police seem to disagree. Under Section 5 of the Public Order Act 1986 a person is guilty of causing harassment, alarm and distress if they display any writing, sign or other visible representation which is threatening, abusive or insulting, within the hearing or sight of a person likely to be caused harassment, alarm or distress thereby apostrophe. One upset resident told Mail Online today, in the context when this poor man cannot return to his home how can this not be threatening? But Vincent's family keep putting it all back and add tributes to the Vincent, 37, who they was a one in a million father with a heart of gold. Sir Craig told LBC Today, we want those laying flowers to respect the local people and the impact on them, those opposed to the flowers should act responsibly, respectfully and reasonably. Apostrophe. Many listeners have been upset by the response, with one saying on Twitter, grow a backbone and stop the flowers being laid while another said, those flowers should be cleared. But yet again you have to appease a minority, man up and police the streets properly. Comedian John Bishop, whose tweet gained more than 11,000 likes within hours, said, The police suggesting that the family of Henry Vincent should be allowed to place floral tributes opposite the house he tried to rob is a disgrace. He was a scumbag who preyed on pensioners. Tributes condone his actions, and imagine how it makes Mr. Osborne Brooks feel. Disgusting. John Macy, 74, a member of Lewisham Positive Aging Council described the police statement calling on people to respect mourners placing flowers for Vincent is a snowflake comment apostrophe. He said, I think that is taking political correctness to a great extreme. It would be like saying you should respect the burglars because they have a job to do. The putting up of the flowers in that quantity was totally offensive. It's as much condoning the crime as mourning the loss of a criminal. There was more of a right to take this down. Apostrophe. Scotland Yard wants Hither Green residents to respect the memorial to the criminal. Some locals claim they've been threatened with arrest, 
Vigilante Ian Gordon was the latest person to tear flowers down yesterday and called it a memorial to a scumbag who spent his life casing out the joints of old people and robbing them. The burglar's family has laid more than 100 bouquets as well as balloons and cards across the road from the home, which Mr. Osborne Brooks cannot return to amid fears his life could be in danger. A chief superintendent said those mourning the dead man, Henry Vincent, should not be intimidated or feel they were not allowed to respond in a dignified way to a tragic death apostrophe. The remarkable intervention has appalled neighbors whose quiet street has become a war zone as the family of the dead criminal descend on the area. More than 20 bouquets of flowers, as well as cards, soft toys and balloons have been placed on the fence opposite the home of Richard Osborne Brooks, 78. It was in this house that Vincent, 37, was fatally stabbed when he confronted the terrified pensioner and his disabled wife in the early hours last week. The tributes to the career criminal have been repeatedly taken down by locals in Hither Green. Southeast London, only to be replaced by Vincent's family. The traveler's relatives keep returning to put it all back up again including cards from his parents, girlfriend and children who say he had a heart of gold and was too good to walk the earth. 8 a.m. Thursday, the flowers and tributes to Vincent remain torn down today after a row between locals and travelers midday Wednesday. Mr. Gordon kicked some bouquets down the street and later threw them in a passing bin lorry Wednesday 8 a.m. Henry Vincent's family returned to the southeast London street to restore the shrine after it was ripped down for a third time last night 9.30 p.m. Tuesday, having ripped half of the tributes from the fence. The man then took them around the corner, left, before stamping on them, shown right 5.30 p.m. Tuesday. Loved ones of Henry Vincent returned once again this evening and started reattaching tributes to the fence opposite the home of Richard Osborne Brooks after they were dismantled overnight and again this afternoon 3.30 p.m. Tuesday, a man wearing a hat hacks down the shrine for career criminal Henry Vincent, opposite the home of Richard Osborne Brooks 2.10 p.m. Tuesday, the shrine had been rebuilt earlier today by relatives and friends of robber Henry Vincent after it was vandalized last night 1 and Tuesday, a vigilante drove to Hither Green, southeast London, before tearing down flowers and dumping the bunches in his boot calling them trash, pictured left to right, Met Deputy Commissioner Sir Craig Mackey appeared on the Nick Ferrari show on LBC Radio this morning, he said, this is a tragedy for the family who have lost a loved one, it is also a tragedy for the homeowner forced to take the action he did, I am pleased we got the quickest possible decision for him in relation to his actions. it would have been preferable if the pavement had remained clear in the local area had, not become the focus of disruption which then needed police resources to manage. The local authority are considering how the flowers and items are managed and we are in putting to that. As the situation stands, that is how this has to be dealt with as laying flowers is not a crime. We want those laying flowers to respect the local people and the impact on them. Those opposed to the flowers should act responsibly, respectfully and reasonably. As the borough commander said yesterday we don't want anyone, the local people or those visiting the scene, to feel intimidated. We will be proportionate in how we deal with the situation and our priority is to keep people safe. We will continue to work with the local authority so the disruption stops and the area can get back to normal as soon as possible. We continue to appeal to the public to help us trace Billy Jeeves who we would like to speak to in connection with the burglary. His children have left a banner on, a road sign promising to never let you go and one daughter wrote a message for her one in million dad saying, I love you more than anything in the world. I will never be ashamed to call you my daddy and you was the best one I could ask for. Yesterday, as they were ripped down for a fourth time, Chief Superintendent Simon Dobinson said, My officers have a responsibility to provide reassurance to local residents so they can go about their daily lives, while also respecting the wishes of family and friends to mark the loss of a loved one. I do not want anyone to feel intimidated or that they are not being allowed to respond in a dignified way to a tragic death. We would urge members of the public to respect the wishes of those who choose to place flowers and other tributes in the area. Hither Green residents are planning an anti traveler protest against stabbed burglar Henry. Vincent's shrine outside killer pensioner Richard Osborne Brooks's house. A woman who refused to be identified pulled up at the scene at 8 a.m. and discussed the demonstration. She says about 60 people would be arriving that afternoon to show solidarity with locals. A Facebook group called Community Peaceful Protest for the Residents of South Park Crescent was set up after the career criminal's death in a botched trade on the pensioner's house in Hither Green, southeast London, last week. 
Vigilantes and Vincent's relatives have been battling over tributes left for the dead burglar, with it being repeatedly trashed and then rebuilt. Only one floral bunch remains at the police guarded scene today. A post on the Facebook group on Wednesday night said, This page has been set up to arrange a peaceful protest to support the residents of South Park Crescent who are being taunted by the constant shrine that is being put up by Henry Vincent's family. We are hoping to gather tomorrow or Friday. In times like this, we need to come together to support each other and show that we will not be bullied or intimidated. 6 p.m. Tuesday, police officers on horseback patrol the scene, amid growing unrest in the street, with neighbors furiously pulling down tributes to the dead burglar left by relatives. The family of Henry Vincent, pictured, insists that he was murdered by the man he was burgling, Billy Jeeves, 28. Right is on the run following a botched raid at the southeast London home of Richard Osborne Brooks last Wednesday last night one of the vigilantes who tore down part of the memorial claimed he was threatened with arrest if he did it again, slain burglar Henry Vincent once pretended to be a police officer to raid a vulnerable elderly woman's home, his victim claims, a disabled pensioner, 62, was left in no doubt that Vincent, 37, was one of four men claiming to be police officers who forced their way into her home in January. Vincent, dressed in a sharp suit, claimed he had caught a man laden with jewelry and cash which had been stolen from a disabled woman's home in Orpington, Kent. Backed up by three other thugs, whom Vincent claimed were plain clothed officers, the four men talked their way into the woman's house before stealing CCTV equipment from a bedroom upstairs. The woman, who asked not to be named for fear of reprisals, was stunned when she saw Vincent's mugshot on television and is 300% certain it is the man who targeted her home, she said. It was between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. when there was a knock on the front door and I saw Henry Vincent standing there in a very smart suit looking clean shaven. He said Madam, I am from the Metropolitan Police. We have captured a burglar who had an amount of money and jewelry taken from your property. As he was talking to me he and three other men started walking into my home. These other men looked like gypsies, they were younger men and he said they were plain clothes police officers. The thugs wandered around, the victim's semi-detached £600,000 home and stole some CCTV camera equipment from an upstairs bedroom during the raid on January 31. Once they had swiped the goods, Vincent and his cronies made hurried excuses and claimed to want to talk to neighbors before quickly rushing out the door and running away on foot. A pensioner called police and PCSO officers attended her home and took fingerprints, but no arrests were made. She added, I am a tough bird, but it is a bit scary. If I had known about the tributes, I would have taken all those flowers down and destroyed them. Those people are the lowest of the low. My godson told me that thank goodness I played my hand. The minute they left the front door I called 999. I just knew they were not police. The man, known as Mike, said, we've been warned that if we do take them down again they will nick us so it's a bit trickier. There's a copper standing right next to the fence keeping an eye on the flowers. You'd think the coppers would have better things to do. Families living close to Mr. Osborne Brooks's home have become exasperated by the continued presence of the shrine, which they believe to be in poor taste and deliberately designed to antagonize them. A 58-year-old resident, who has lived on the road for 18 years, said, the flowers have made things worse. They keep going up then are taken away. Now we are living in a war zone in what has always been a quiet street and it needs to stop. Police have to be the grown-ups and calm things down. It can't go on. One neighbor, who did not give her name for fear of reprisals, said, this is a quiet community and it's being ruined. The attention is ramping up and it's causing vigilantes from outside the area to turn up. We feel under threat and it's putting us all in danger. But in an extraordinary intervention Chief Superintendent Dobinson, Lewisham Borough Commander, appeared to take the side of the burglar's family, who are from the traveling community, he said. I am aware of the concerns that have been raised by residents regarding the floral tributes placed in Hither Green. We would urge members of the public to respect the wishes of those who choose to place flowers and other treats in the area. We would also request those placing tributes or visiting the area to behave in a responsible manner so as not to disrupt the local community. Officers are not there to safeguard or facilitate the laying of floral tributes. We are liaising with the local authority who are considering appropriate management of the floral tributes. A small police presence remains in place in and around South Park Crescent to provide reassurance to the public. There have been no arrests. Officers will assess any potential criminal offenses including any allegations that are made to police, which will be dealt with in a fair and appropriate manner on an individual basis. Officers said they would need to receive a complaint from the owner of the fence on which the shrine is erected to take action. Firefighters fitted smoke alarms in Mr. Osborne Brooks's 500,000-pound home and door-to-door -door salesman 
took advantage of the chaos by trying to sell burglar alarms to neighbors worried about security. Mr. Osborne Brooks was initially arrested on suspicion of murder, sparking a political outcry, but two days later was told he would face no further action, that, in turn, angered Vincent's family, who have branded the pensioner a murderer apostrophe. Mr. Osborne Brooks and his wife have been forced into hiding and may never be able to return to their home in the fears of a vendetta against them. The latest episode of the drama came at midday yesterday, when Ian Gordon, from nearby Lewisham, ripped down the remaining bouquets from the fence and put them in a rubbish truck. He said, it's disgraceful. In this country there should be no rights for criminals. Adding, my dad fought in Monte Casino for a two bob a week pension. And you've got scumbags coming around here with effing toys, coming down here with your effing toys, a reference to the plethora of teddy bears left in memory of Vincent. As he tore down the tributes he told Mail Online, these are scumbags, 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 we've had enough in this country of scumbags. It's